Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty powerful little mini PC from ASRock known as the 4x4 Box 7840U. Now, the name definitely gives away the APU we're using here, and throughout the years I've tested quite a few of these 4x4 box systems. This one takes the cake in performance, I mean CPU, GPU, hands down. This can game, you can do work on it, you can do media playback, it's a great little system. Now a lot of these mini PCs that we've seen with the 7000 series uh, 7840, usually the 7840H, but they opted for the U variant here. And in this we can actually run it up to 45 watts, which definitely unlocks some performance from a 28 watt base TDP. Inside of the packaging we do get a vase amount, obviously we get that 4x4 7840U mini PC, a 120 watt power supply, plus the screws for NVMe SSD. Now obviously we are working with a very small form factor mini PC here, and up front, when it comes to the I.O., we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port, and two USB 4 ports which support 40 gig protocol, eGPU, extra fast storage, or you can use these as display 1.4 out, so we can do actually four displays with this mini PC. On each side, not much going on here, but when we flip around back, You'll see we've got our power input, two USB 2.0 ports, which is a bit odd. We've also got two Ethernet ports. Now, one of these is 2.5, the other one is just gig, but we also have a full size HDMI port and a full size display port. These 4x4 boxes directly from ASRock do come bare bones. There are companies out there that'll load these up for you. But taking a look at the internals, you can see we do have room in here for a 2.5 inch drive on the bottom. We've got the cabling, also comes with all of our mounting hardware. It also supports a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe. I'm going with the 2 terabyte drive right here. This already came pre-installed with a Wi-Fi 6 slash Bluetooth 5.2 chip, and we're going to need RAM. And since we're using Ryzen 7000, this does support DDR5. It'll do up to 5600 megahertz, and I'm running 32 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz in dual channel right here. So uh, 32 is a bit overkill for a mini PC. 16 would get you by just fine, but this is what I had. And it'll do up to 64 gigs if you needed it. Really easy to get in here. There's just four screws on the bottom. Then you can access the NVMe, RAM, and a 2.5 inch drive right in the bottom bracket. I did bug ASRock quite a bit about the uh, 7000 series 4x4s, and it really comes down to their optimizations they do in the BIOS. When it comes down to it, I've tested the 4000 and the 5000 series from them. The 5000 series with the 5800U was one of the best performing 5800Us that we've ever tested on the channel and it was actually running at a much lower TDP than some of the other mini PCs on the market. So hopefully we've got kind of the same thing here. But when it comes to the specs, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. Eight cores based on Zen 4, we've got 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz, and a boost up to 5.1. Graphics are gonna be handled by the AMD Radeon 780M iGPU, 12 CUs, up to 2700 megahertz, and yeah, these are based on RDNA 3. You can do up to 64 gigabytes of LP DDR4 running at 5600 megatransfers per second in dual channel with this thing. One Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD, plus we've got room for that 2.5 inch drive. And for my testing, I'll be running Windows 11 Pro. Now there is one little thing that you should change in the BIOS if you're looking to get the maximum performance out of this, and we'll jump over there right now. Okay, so first things first, there's actually two performance modes from the BIOS, and obviously we want to get the best performance out of this mini PC. So from here, we're gonna to head to advanced, CPU configuration, normal mode, which is around a 28 watt TDP. And we've also got performance mode, which jumps that up to 45 watts, and it really does make a huge difference. So with everything you're gonna be seeing in this video, we are in performance mode. Okay, so here it is. Yeah, we've actually seen the 7840U in a lot of handhelds, but we haven't tested it in a mini PC. Now, uh, the other ones that we've seen are the 7840H, a little higher end than that. But uh, with this U here, we're up to 45 watts, and we can use a third-party application to up that TDP. But we're going to kind of keep it right there at 45 to see what this thing can do. It does support that 5600 megahertz RAM, and of course, the Radeon 780M. Now with this, we don't have to worry about battery or anything like that, so we can run at a sustained 45 watts, and the cooling system will handle it. I did try to go up to around 60, but yeah, I mean, it'll thermal throttle pretty quick at 60 watts there. But overall, with the way it's set up right now, it's a very fast system. I mean, you want to do some web browsing, some email checking, document editing, 4K video playback. And speaking of that, let's check out some 4K 60 HDR video playback. We're going to go full screen with it. Stats for nerds. 
make sure we're at 4K. Up here, got our drop frames listed. And just straight from the start here, we've got one drop frame, and that's normal. You know, going into a video, usually have a couple drop frames, even on my really high-end gaming machine. These little chips do really great with 4K video playback. We're at 4K 60 HDR. In fact, these will do 8K video at 60 FPS. Now, that's kind of a single stream. I've actually been able to do two 4K 60 streams with the 7840H. Pretty sure we'd be able to do it here. Basically, the difference is going to be that TDP. We could take this up to 45 watts. So yeah, if you're looking for a nice little media playback device, this will definitely have you covered. That 7840U really isn't a joke, and when it comes to just raw CPU performance, it hangs in there with some of the higher-end desktop CPUs. It's pretty amazing what they've done here. So yeah, using this as your everyday PC, you're going to have a really good time with it. And I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM here. It's a little overkill for, you know, just an everyday little PC. 16 would be more than enough, even if you want to get into some gaming. And that's where these little RDNA 3 iGPUs really shine. Now, the first thing I want to show off are some GPU benchmarks that I ran on this device. Then we'll move into some real-world PC gaming. And remember, with all of these benchmarks, we are at a 45-watt TDP from the BIOS. 3D Mark Night Raid, 26,713. Fire Strike coming in with a 7,440. And the last one here is Time Spy with a 3,110. Now, I know for a fact that we can get a bit better in each one of these benchmarks here with a little more TDP thrown at it. Basically, with that 45 watt TDP, it needs to split it up between the CPU, so we've got eight cores over there that need to boost up pretty high, and the 780MI GPU. The 780M itself, up to 2700 megahertz, can pull around 36 watts, so taking it up a bit more will net us some better performance. But the way the cooling system is set up in this, around 50 watts is kind of max without hitting that thermal throttle really quickly. But it still performs absolutely amazingly when it comes to PC gaming. Here we have God of War, we're at 900p original. Now this is one of those games where we've always had to kind of drop it down, but with this, we didn't have to go to low and I didn't have to use FSR. We got an average of 73 FPS with it set up like this, and if you want to run it at 1080, you will need to enable a little bit of FSR, taking it to balance, you can get an average of around 67 there. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, no resolution scale, we're at 1080p, medium settings. We got an average of 76 FPS. And I will tell you, you know, in corridors, when there's not a ton of enemies around, this actually jumps up to around 115 FPS. Locking these at 60 on an iGPU is really the way to go, but I always like to see how high we can take it. And this game is really playable. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, we got an average of 86 FPS, and I really do wish that the new 2023 Forza Motorsports had the same kind of optimizations because we can't reach this kind of frame rate with that, but I did test it in this video, so we'll take a look at that one at the end. But if you want to play a really good arcade racer on this machine, Forza Horizon 5 runs amazingly. So recently, we actually had some really nice driver updates that took care of some of the issues we were seeing with uh, Spider-Man Remastered and Spider-Man Miles Morales on the 780MI GPU. Right now, we are at low settings, but we're at 1080p with no FSR, and it's running at 60fps. I've always found that with this game and Miles Morales, turning V-Sync on with these iGPUs is the way to go. Uh, this way, we've actually got a pretty steady 60 with the games. I also wanted to test out Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, and these are custom low settings. So if you go into the uh, settings for the game itself and just go right to low, there's still some stuff that's at medium. On these iGPUs, we do need to kind of take those down, but even with a lot of stuff going on right now in the city, we got an average of 67 FPS with this game. And the final game I wanted to test here was Forza Motorsports. We're at 1080p, low, medium, and we can't hit 60 with this game on an iGPU just yet. AMD recently released a driver pack that does support Forza Motorsports, but then they kind of took it right back down, so we're waiting on new drivers there and some more optimizations for the game. I do have a feeling that in the future on the 780M, we'll be able to run this at 60fps, low settings, 1080p. But right now, I would recommend 1080p, 30fps, medium settings across the board. 
And the final thing I always like to take a look at is total system power consumption. Some people are looking for a very low powered PC that can play games and this one can definitely do it. While I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. Remember, we're at a 45 watt TDP, idle, this pulls 12 watts, average gaming, 56 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 73. At a 28 watt TDP, obviously these numbers will be much less, but you're not going to see the kind of performance that we had in this video, given that we're running at 45 watts. So yeah, in the end, this thing is putting out some really great performance, and it is the best performing box 4x4 from ASRock so far. I'm sure we're going to see 8,000 or 9,000 down the road, but right now the 7840U in this little package is really awesome. If there's anything else you want to see running on this machine, like a different operating system, we could go with Linux. I think that would be pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more about these, I'll leave links to their official website in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.